Amazing. Right. Okay, I'm just going to do the intro, then we'll get straight into it. Okay. Uh, you all set and ready to go, Harvey? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Real Talk. I'm your host, Sam, and today I'm joined by Harvey. Harvey, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Good. Are you enjoying staying indoors? Oh, loving it. I'm going to go mad <laughs> in about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get used to it is something which is very difficult. Now, obviously, with the current circumstances and what is happening, as you can tell by the way this is looking, we're all on Skype. Um, and for everyone who knows me, I've been interested in uh, science and space and everything like that for as long as I can remember. So I'm very, very happy to have today's guest with us, especially for our first ever episode. Very appreciated we have for our first episode of Mr. Mark Sargent. How are you doing, Mark? I'm doing well. Thanks very much for having me. Uh, thank you very much for joining, especially at such long last notice. It's, it's great to have you here. Now, I do just want to, before we go any further, further, obviously, with what we want to talk about and what you are most commonly known for, I just want to say, you know, I'm not... By far, I'm not here to kind of question anything. I'm really here, I think, as the same with Harvey, to kind of listen and get as much information for ourselves from your from your belief, uh, beliefs. Is that the right word? I don't really know. If that, or what you tend I don't know, to belief, have. Beliefs is fine. Beliefs is fine. Sure. The biggest argument for, really. So I think, I mean, I've done research. I've got questions. I just want to know right from the beginning about where it questions started to appear for you about what was being told to us as you've mentioned before from when we're you know starting school and right 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 we... i i didn't really question much in this i mean yeah i delved into conspiracies once the movie jfk came out in the early 90s uh by oliver stone um but this particular conspiracy even the the most hardened conspiracy person never looks at this because it's ridiculous it's 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 stupid um and then i just because i got older and <clears throat> it was on my bucket list of things to do it's like eh, why not take a look at it sure and so i looked at it in 2014 thought i could shoot it down yeah, because yeah. because i hated it and um over three days i was looking at it and um said wow there's there's more to this than meets the eye and so I really kind of knuckled down, and I was more stub stubborn than most, and it took me nine months before I finally um, uh, went to, uh, to went to the Internet Hive Mind and created a video and series on YouTube called Flat Earth Clues. And it was really, yeah. that, that was really more of a cry for help than anything else, which was, okay, tell me, Hive Mind, tell me where I screwed up here, because I can't prove the globe anymore. Not in a court of law, I can't not not definitive absolute proof i mean especially if you take out the space agencies which you kind of have to and that's insane and really when i put the video series out there i didn't think much of it i think okay well you know either it's going to resonate or it's not or somebody from academia is going to call me up and say this is where you went wrong and, yeah. they, and they didn't uh ever i mean the media contacted me because they thought it was interesting and people contacted me because they thought it was interesting but then subject matter experts started calling me up people from all branches of the military army navy air force marines engineers air pilots air traffic wow. controllers they all started calling me saying you know what it's not that nuts here's why and so the the short version for anyone that's that's been living in a cave for the last five years is that uh, we're living in a building, basically a big structure with walls and a floor and a ceiling that was so huge that even our best and brightest, even with our technology that we had at the, at the time, didn't even figure it out until about 1960. And when they did, they said, yeah, you know what? We're not telling anybody in this until we can figure out a way to push it out to the public in the way, you know, a narrative that we choose. And that's what they did and that's that's where we are now and so since 2015 this thing has just got the the short version is between myself and a whole bunch of other people that are in the community we've created a version of explaining the world that's easier than the solar system model and that's why it just keeps res yeah. resonating and so and and since then i just 
we've gotten almost no resistance from the scientific community and we've been i mean i've been allowed to do what two books a documentary uh commercial uh, multiple podcasts you know i lost count of how many inter interviews and uh it's it's been just wild just wild in fact, yeah. in fact i was just over in the uk um just recently i did um before this whole virus thing happened um i did um philip and holly on this morning yeah I, we um me and harvey were just talking about that before and yeah. that's kind of what really got me into kind of contacting you because i was i mean i was just having a night of researching stuff as you do and you end up clicking yeah. on one video and going on to something completely <laughs> different and then i got yeah it'd be a million others and then got onto it um and it that interview obviously i suppose then to go at what point was it how you were just looking into something to then suddenly click how did it feel for you to get contacted by all of these different type of people that it, you would it never was, have heard of before? it was kind of a mixed blessing because on one side i really didn't want it to go anywhere because uh, if if it was true that it meant that you know I was wrong about so many things you know in in, in my life it, nobody likes to be uh, tricked you know the the old saying is it's easier to fool someone than to t to convince them that they've actually been fooled and so when people started calling me saying oh yeah you know you may be onto something it was like no 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 can't can't be can't be. It, it, this can't be this can't be right but it, so any doubts that i had just evaporated over the the, yeah. the back part of 2015 to where now i mean none of those people none of the subject matter experts that are on my my channel uh none of them refuted their own tech their own testimony and nobody went out against them i mean i would have thought at the very least somebody in the navy or the air force or something would have come out and said oh yeah he's wrong here's why and they didn't uh they all i mean nobody's been able to really answer the the big questions and what i what i really liked that i did was i helped inspire people to to do their own research which is the end what i do at the end of just about every video i say look don't take my word for it do your own research figure it out for yourself yeah and one of the first things you know they did which i know it's one of your questions is uh you know they they did something that wasn't even in the clues which is they started running out to the beaches and started taking long distance photography with hd yeah. cameras and that was you know if you're going to ask you know what's the the biggest proof for for most people what gets most people into it that's what it is it's long distance photography because it's easy it's easy to do you can go to any body of water shoot something across the length and if you know what the, the curvature of the earth supposedly is you can kind of figure it out for yourself and it's just wild to, yeah to see it yeah definitely yeah. i think i think as well with what you were saying about the biggest kind of view changer, should we say, for people is photos and videos that we have that people can see online and everything. Yeah. But then, of course, it's for me, if I was, you know, doing even doing research about it the other evening and really looking into it um, since being in contact with yourself as well, um, the, some of the things that I saw really kind of quite shocked me in a way of why I kind of questioned, made me question myself as to why I was searching for. I think I've got some of the quotes here and uh, some of them about when I was even looking into yourself, when I saw about your book and everything like that, of course there were things just like only the clever people really understand, basically calling people that believe the earth is fat and different to how we're told, uh, stupid, yeah. dumb, yeah. they're not clever. So how, if, if someone was to go into researching it, questioning what they would do, how would how would they then get over that kind of self thought of questioning themselves to why they're looking into it? Because I, if for me, no, if I was wanting no, to, no, that's a good question, um, and the, it kind of ties into why we have such a high retention rate. So most people don't know. I mean, we have a ninety nine percent retention rate, and, and if you're wondering what that is, that means that it, once you get in, you're in. It's almost impossible to get out. And the reason is, is because I'm not the one that convinces you. I'm not the one that persuades you. I just put an idea in your head and you kind of run with it. So what happens is you end up tearing down the globe yourself. 
that's and meaning you you're the one that says again it's the natural response in fact i joke with people i said if you don't laugh at this in the first 10 minutes then there's probably something wrong with you because everyone yeah. should we're, we're conditioned is like oh no there's a globe you see globes freaking everywhere and so what happens is you look at the globe and you you start to to pull on the threads and pull on the threads until finally there's nothing left which is why when people get less enthusiastic about flat earth you know when they you know don't make videos as much or or they just kind of get tired they can't go back to the globe because there's nothing to go back to because you were the one that tore it down in the first place it's not like all of a sudden you're into flat earth and it's like nope i don't believe this anymore i'm going back to the globe there's no globe to go back to because you convinced yourself that uh that it's that it wasn't a globe in fact um the the court case version i'd like to throw at people is is like can i prove to you right now right now that the earth is flat nope nope can't can i create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that you have nothing else to go back to except some sort of flat model yeah i can't I can do that all day long and when people i love it when people um say well reasonable doubt isn't enough i go oh it is in court i don't know what it is over in england but over here oh yeah reasonable doubt wins all the time and mm -hmm. that's what you know that that's how it works for for most people um and when other people come at me again the the peer pressure and you know people yelling and saying oh you're an idiot you're a moron blah 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 that's fine because i i can't get mad at them and be hypocritical because i was them five years ago i was absolutely on the other side of the fence I mean, when I first got into it, I was just banging my head on the keyboard going, there's no way, there's no way, there's no way. And uh, so I absolutely understand it. And when, when people come at me, you know, it's, it's never physical or anything. In fact, we've done hundreds of meetups and, and all sorts of um, uh, conferences, and we've never had an incident. They're not, they're not coming after me. They're coming after the idea. And that makes it even more, uh, more special because, you know, how do you shoot down an idea? tough to do i mean i could die in a plane crash tomorrow it's not gonna make any difference this thing is gonna, just gonna keep moving definitely yeah i i think as well the biggest thing i think i would say people have against this is obviously what they're told you yeah. know the history things that we study things that we're told so you know it's it's a big word but are the people that tell us these things are they in your opinion, are they liars? Do no, they? no, 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 not at all. Um, as a matter of fact, that, that's a great question. Uh, I get it all the time, which is, are you saying, people are saying, are you telling me that all air, you know, every scientist is in on it and every NASA employee is in on it and every um, pilot is in on it? It's like, no, no, not at all. They don't know this. It's that, it's that huge. Uh, you know, pilots know, I've talked to them. Pilots know full well when they look out the cockpit, it's absolutely flat in all directions but they're told it's a globe and it's like yeah i really got to the, get these passengers to the other side so let's not even worry about it um scientists don't have to know anything nasa employees don't have to know anything except for the telemetry guys 99 percent of mm -hmm. anyone in the scientific community doesn't have to know anything um the the i'll, I'll drop a name for you um, a couple of years ago i did um good morning britain and I was kind of intimidated because uh, Piers Morgan, you know, he's known to be kind of, you know, an ass. And yeah. so I was, I was going... Yeah. Was, he is, excuse my language, he is a dick. Like, uh, hands up a bit. Like, he's not a nice guy. Yeah. I, 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 that's my opinion anyway. He's I, not a nice guy. I, I, I know part of it's his act and his character. It's like, you know, his, oh, of course. His, his producers want him. It's like, just he's got a knack for just pushing buttons and, and ticking people off, mm. even now. Um, but I was a little worried. It's like, oh, great. And then I find out at the last minute that sitting next to him is one of our astronauts, Terry Virts. And at some point, you know, Piers, you know, jumps in and says, are you calling, are you sitting here calling Terry Virts a liar? And I said, no, I'm, well, I said, I said, look, I'm not saying that Terry's, a, you know, that our astronauts are bad guys. I'm not saying they're villains. Uh, but I'm saying that's like, look, people forget that that Terry and just about every other astronauts, they're ranking officers in the United States military. He's a full bird colonel in the United States military. It's like, look, he he knows exactly how to follow orders. And they're under a different set of rules than than we are. You know, mm -hmm. treason is a very, very serious thing. If you say something, you know, it's like, look, it's classified. You can't talk about it. If you talk about it, it's not one of those things where you go to court. <laughs> you know, you have Let's a lawyer. Yeah. 
You yeah. get you go in for a, a, a special group, and then they throw you in a room. They they lock you in a room and throw away the room. It's it's you don't see these guys again. So mm. uh, anyway, what I'm saying is that Terry. It's not that he was lying lying for God and country. That happens all the time. And we tell people to do it. It's like we tell our soldiers to do it all the all the time. Now, does he know that he's faking something? Sure. Uh, does he know exactly why? Do they tell him exactly why? No. Why would you? It'd be no different than um, telling an assassin uh, more than he needs to know. It's like, look, you need to shoot this diplomat that's coming out of this hotel room <laughs> on this sort of day, right? That's all you tell him. You're not going to tell him the, the, the political backstory and the intrigue involved and all the people leading. It's like, no, shoot that guy. In fact, you're as as the sniper. You're not even allowed to ask. You, you, you don't care. Yeah. It's like I don't care. This guy coming out now. Nah, he's mine. You do not care about the intrigue, and that's the same thing with the astronauts. They're they're told to fake something, and it's above their pay grade to know why. Now that being said, let me throw one more thing in there, which is I think the Apollo astronauts, the first ones, I think they knew full well. I think it was one of, we we kind of learn as we go along, and I think they told them. They said, "Yeah, here's why you're faking it," and I think it was too much. For him. It's a big thing if all of a sudden, you know, you're getting parades <laughs> down New York City and, you know, for nothing, basically, you know, for, for just kind of, you know, being dropped into an ocean in a capsule and being rescued. And that's all they really did. Mm. I, do, I don't believe that any astronaut has ever been on the top of, uh, of a rocket, which is basically just a pile of, of liquid explosives, because you wouldn't want to. You don't want to take that risk, which is why the, the Challenger disaster, and I know it's before your guys' time, back in 86, when that happened, they had to relocate them. They, they put them into witness relocation. And there's, just, as far as I know, there's five or six of them still walking around. And, you know, they've, they've been photographed. Two of them claim to be twins of the people that were on, on Challenger. So, and... Oh, I didn't know that. I could go on. Only about the Challenger disaster, but I didn't know that... Yeah, I didn't know that either. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look it up. Uh, in fact, there's tons of videos. Just all you have to do is type in Challenger Astronauts Alive and click on images. You'll see some fantastic stuff. And you know how movies nowadays, it's tough to, when you're trying to age actors, it's tough to do. They never look quite right. You know, it's like, you know, make somebody look older than they are, 30 years older. The, you know, any actor. It's like, yeah, they try. You take these people and you look at the photographs from 1986 to now. Some of their facial features are so distinct. You're going, oh yeah, that's exactly what he'd look like. Hey, wait a minute, why is he still around? <laughs> and 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 of course, yeah. they didn't know back in '86. There was no internet. You didn't know. You could put these people anywhere you wanted. Who's gonna? We had newspapers, television, and radio. That's all we had. So yeah. no, no one figured it out. It was brilliant. In fact, we even one of our guys even tracked down one of them at his house. And, and he, in fact, I put it on my channel. It was really, really yeah, in fact, we did it this year. And um, it was really interesting. It was, wasn't organized or anything. He just went. And the guy even said, like, right away, it's like, yeah, I know. I, I used to look like him, a lot like him when I was younger. It's like, really? So you've gotten this question before <laughs> type, type of thing. It's like, because he doesn't look like just any or, ordinary guy, you know? And, and, no. uh, and he's like, nope, nope. And, and you gotta watch it. It's really, you're watching this thing and he's, he's, it, he's not denying it as much as he should be denying it. Let's put it that way. As a matter of fact, the, the first thing he, what he should have done, cause you know, when, um, when you're being accused of a crime, right? It's like, you know, it's, oh no, we think you shot the bartender on Tuesday, right? What's the first thing you're going to do? You're saying, no, on Tuesday, I was with my, my brothers, you know, out, we were having a party out and blah, 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 right? Well, he didn't say that. What he should have said is like, no, in 1986, I was here. Didn't say that. He, he just said, no, yeah. no, I, I, yeah, I know it kind of looked like him. It's like, dude, you're a terrible. Didn't have man. an alibi, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Wow, crazy. Uh, going on to how you were saying about Googling, going back to Googling and everything like that, obviously yeah. uh, media, um, as you've mentioned, you've just come back from England doing an interview on TV. Yeah. How, how would you say media has affected not uh, the side of people who believe the earth is round, yeah. how would you say it's affected... I'm going to say side because it, retrospect speaking, it is sides. It is flat earth versus round. It's a side. Yeah. What, how would you, how has it affected your side? Obviously positively 
it's obvious. But how would you say it's affected it negatively? That's why I want to know. Negatively, not as much as you might think. Um, because the topic is so out there for a lot of people, they don't know how to attack it. And it's I've gotten really lucky over the years in that just about every media group that's can't, that that's come at me, it's not like 9/11 or climate change or Sandy Hook or something like that where there's the opinions are already formed and hardened and there's defenses already set up against it. There's almost no defense set up against flat Earth right away because it's like why would you ever set up? It? You know, you're you're basically running mm. unopposed down this path and so the yeah the the media negatively almost nothing as a matter of fact um i i can say honestly for a, i mean our ranks just kept growing and growing and growing because the exposure that was going out there was either neutral was never really positive but most of the time it was neutral kind of every once in a while you'd get some scientists that would come at it but as the old saying goes even bad publicity is free and it just kept exposing, you know, like the documentary when it came out, Behind the Curve, generated huge amounts of interest uh, for it, especially when Netflix picked it up. Um, and then, yeah, I was going to say, I was going to go into that. Oh, yeah, like, go ahead. That... Go ahead. Well, I was just going to ask, like, how is it, obviously, with it now, with it then going on to Netflix, yeah. how was, that's, to me, that's, a, as someone who loves films, loves the film industry, yeah. and who hardly can they go for this as well. Yeah. yeah how, like that, that's a good achievement. Oh, that, it that was, was you, people have no idea how hard it is to get into films if you're, a, if you're a filmmaker. And the people that did this out of Los Angeles, you know, not ours, they hated Flat Earth. God, they hated Flat Earth. Um, but they thought it was interesting enough and they just hated it more as they got into it. You know, we, we shot for seven months. Yeah. And um, what a lot of people don't know is, so if you don't have a distributor right away, it all comes down to the distributor. You can make any movie you want. But if you have nowhere to put it, you know, if you, no theaters are going to run it, no distributor is going to sh- put it out there for you, you're, you're dead in the water. And so you go to the film festivals. And like the Toronto Film Festival was the first one we got into. And there were 3,000 submissions. Out of those, they pick 100. And out of those, you know, you might make the top 10 in terms of, oh, must see. And we did. And we, we just kept getting into more film festivals. And even then, the producers were like, nah, well, it's never going to sell. We're never going to, you know, we're never going to make any money off of it. And immediately iTunes picked it up. And then Amazon. And then finally, Netflix was the last one. They were the last, the last holdout. And they bought it. And so at the beginning of 2018, I believe, that's when everything just, 2018? 2017, 2018, or 2018, 2019. God, I can't remember now. I'm losing track. I think it was 2018. <laughs> um, it just it just took off. It, you know, it, it, every, but I didn't know that everyone under the age of 30 has Netflix. I did not have any idea. And so instantly, like my email load doubled, mm. and uh, it got it. You know, it got a lot of traction. A lot, and it got traction because it was it played both sides. That was the big, I sat in film festivals within audiences and I knew exactly what was happening. And that was, you couldn't give people too much, if you treat it like a drug, too much uncut flat earth. You had to go back and forth. You know, it was like flat earth for a little while, then a scientist, flat earth for a little while, psychologist, flat earth and then an astronaut. You, because too much, it all, all of a sudden would be a propaganda film. And that yeah. worked for a lot of people. They felt safe going in. They got a hundred minutes worth. And by the time they were done, they had a lot of questions. They had so many questions. I mean, basically, my email load was just nonstop for for months. Was hey, I saw a Netflix documentary. I got questions. Yeah. <laughs> Here are my questions, ranging from one question to fifty. And uh, and yeah, I, I would I would have only changed a couple things in the movie. Uh, I knew they were going to take shots at us, uh, and and I, I didn't mind because you know it, I, I understood the producers will tell you right off the bat, it doesn't matter where whether a person loves or hates a topic as long as they're engaged to the topic, yeah. as long as they're talking about it. And that's what we wanted. And I mean, I heck, I sat at a film festival and once they knew I was in the audience and I got up, you know, they had me come up on stage to answer questions. I think like 80% of the people never left. They, they didn't get up from their seats. They just had questions to where eventually they had to kick us all out. And that happened wow. again and again. So yeah, a lot, a lot of fun. I don't, don't regret it for a second. That's good. That's good. Yeah, no, it, it was just for me something that I've always wanted to know. You know, you speak to 
filmmakers and friends and previous yeah. colleagues and clients and everything about how how to get somewhere but you know having that was such a it was a niche yeah. niche market really because you know with no I, I obviously i didn't like i said at the beginning i don't want to I'm never going to argue with someone about it. You've got oh, no, good. a lot more knowledge. No, no, no. I just, like, I've, trust me, I've, you've got so much more knowledge than me. <laughs> I, it would just be me wasting my breath. I'll just, I'll, <clears throat> I'll try to argue, and then I'll end up sitting there going, "Okay, all right, cool, yeah, fine, I believe you." <laughs> and, and, so by, that, and by the way, uh, speaking of niche markets, um, l- let me bring it up because there was another person that was supposed to be in that documentary, which was Mad Mike, the uh, the rocket guy. Really? He was supposed to be in it, and they chose not to go with him because they were worried that he might crash. <laughs> and if he crashed, well, do you use the footage? Then it comes down to a question of, of ethics. It's like, do we, yeah. do we don't? You know, it's supposed to be a human mm. interest piece. And so he ended up getting his own documentary done on him called Rocket Man. And subsequently after that, he got his own television series, which had just started filming for, for the uh, Science Channel called um homemade astronauts and that's when of course you know first episode literally right out of the gate that's he crashes and dies and people came at me and and said well you know do you regret helping fund him you know helping you know have the the rocket bills like no no he was a daredevil first he was a daredevil way before he met us he would in fact he was in his 60s and so like look he wanted to go out famous he went out famous and that's not supposed to be a downer or anything it's like look he it was it was he gained he generated huge amounts of exposure for the cause, and that's what he you know that's what he signed on to do. It's like it's like hey, will you give us if if you he came to us and said please help me fund my rocket. We said yeah sure put a flat Earth sticker on the side of it. That's how the whole yeah. the whole thing started. And really, yeah yeah that was it. And uh, and and well wow. he didn't he he was not a flat Earth believer when he started out. But the problem was, is that the media, you know, paid a lot of attention to him and they kept coming to him. It's like, tell us about this flutter thing. It's like he had to learn things on the fly because that's all they wanted to yeah. talk about. They didn't want to talk about his rocket. They just wanted to talk about flat earth. So it's very interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. It's crazy to think how that had a massive deal. And like you say, he had a TV show then just oh, yeah. dropped. In. Yeah, and or and yes. if if the world doesn't collapse in the next three months, there will be some sort of documentary that will follow. There will be another documentary. The Science Channel yeah. has so much footage mm-hmm. that uh, they will be able to turn it into something if they want to. So. Yeah, that's very true. It's very true. Now, coming to so we spoke about obviously your part and how you got to face in the current to your so right now what what. What's a normal day in a life? Like, what, what, what's a thing? How do you keep this going now? Is it, is it still something that's just technically a hobby, or is it your? Oh your, no, like, no, this it's is your life. It's something you've given your whole life to. This is this is what I do. Um, last year, for example, I did. Oh jeez. Well, normally, I mean, I do I do interviews as much as I can. Um, I'll do meetups if they're fairly close, or if somebody wants to fly me out to a meetup. So I'll fly out to different meetups around the United States. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I did conferences in Calgary, Los Angeles, South Carolina, Dallas, Auckland, Stockholm. I opened the Gather Festival, which was a lot of fun. And uh, that's cool. Uh, did the UK conference and even did um, that was all in 2019. And did some street activism up in uh, Belfast and Dublin. <laughs> which, did you really? Yeah, which was fun. And uh, and then when I, it was interesting because, uh, and in fact, and then I and I did a commercial down in Melbourne, on top of it, for a, a mobile phone app for an online gambling app down in because I didn't know that gambling is completely legal in all parts of Australia. And it, what was interesting was I just had gotten back from the UK conference and then. The producers of Philip and Holly called me and said, "Hey, how would you like to come out?" And it's like, did you not realize I was just there? And so, yeah. I, so I had to turn around and go back to uh, go back to London and um, and do the show. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, you know, they gave me we went over the time limit and they gave it to me. 
and uh, you know Philip was Philip was trying to poke as much as he could, but he was in a kind of in a different position anyway because remember he had just come out uh, literally that Friday before, yeah. and yeah. so he was and I think and I told him afterwards I said you know good for you you know good that you would uh, you know stick you know I, I'm a big believer of people um, uh, being true to themselves. And, and I know it's tough in, in our society. It's like, you know, it's like, look, don't, don't lie to, you know, in that regards. And, and, uh, so it was kind of fun, but it was, it was neat meeting them. And, uh, and, and the reason we got in, just so you know, is we had people, it, I, we got into that show is because we, had, there were several of the producers that were ours, that we were m m pe part yeah. of our, part, part of our team, which is like, I like to joke, it's that line from James Bond, you know, the first thing you should know about us is we have people everywhere. And we do. Same reason I got the, the commercial down in Melbourne. I didn't get it because they, I mean, they could have hired anybody to pretend. I was the only person they flew in for it. Um, and that was because several people that worked at that company, the people that were in charge of this advertising campaign were ours. So, oh. yeah. yeah. It's great. Now, you obviously had, you had your film and then you had a... It, was it a book as well you had? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry. I did um, I the the... The clues were turned into a book at the end of 2015, Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit, and then the sequel to it, Flat Earth Clues, End of the World. <laughs> nice timing, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that just came out uh, for the Dallas conference, and so that was November. And yeah, they're both out there on Amazon. And the, the End of the World one was kind of a, it was a, re it starts with, it's basically a recap of how, you know, in case you missed it, <laughs> This is how, this is why Flat Earth is the way it has going from, you know, from 2015 all the way to now, uh, going into a lot of the different channels and players, um, talks about the documentary, uh, talks about the conferences and, and, you know, just how the journey, not just my journey, just the journey of, of the, the community, which is just so fascinating to me. Yeah. Crazy. That's good. It's, it's uh, I was looking into the, the book when I was in a saw. Uh, that's where I saw that, and I was just interested in to think that you've done a lot. Uh, obviously, you mentioned you had your the this morning, which is where I, I'm guessing a lot of a lot of people I would imagine came to you after that. With that being one of the biggest shows in the UK, you know that's how yeah. I really found of yourself and started to see a lot of your work you know soon where the algorithm works and everything as soon as you click on a video of someone's name yeah you go yeah. onto another social media it's like there they are in an advert so how did how did going on this morning work out for you uh that worked out really really well um as a matter of fact right after that uh, we were so close um one of the uh because i still don't have an agent uh but there was a uh uh, agent out in London that called me because I didn't know that you guys out there have Pancake Day. That's a thing. Yeah. Pancake yeah. In February. Yeah. Yeah. So they did. Um. They they contacted McDonald's and McDonald's wanted to run a commercial for Pancake Day and since pancakes are round and flat, they were gonna they were gonna bring me in and at the la but they couldn't get a film team fast enough because literally it was like really short notice. To where it's like, oh yeah, we gotta shoot this thing because it's coming up like this next week. We gotta get we gotta get, get the commercial out there, and which meant we would have to shoot over the weekend. And because of union rules or something like that, the um, McDonald's was only authorized. They only used a certain group of film teams, and they said, sorry, if you can't use one of these film groups, we can't we can't shoot it. And they and okay. so we didn't. So that was kind of fun. Um, and then, yeah, after that, there were other people that contacted it, it. Media feeds off each other, which most people don't get, which is everybody in media, everyone steals from each other. So everybody in media, they will watch other people's like, who did this, who, who, who did they have on and who did they have on? And it's this, it's this weird connection domino effect where all of a sudden, if you're on something like, well, Philip and Holly, of course, things changed because of, you know, the virus. Uh, mm -hmm. but that once you're on one show you get to go on other shows just because you know in fact there was um the the group london real contacted me and i was supposed to go back out there for that and in fact the, the timing was terrible i was supposed to do london real the same time i was with philip and holly but they were in, they were shooting in new york and so they said sorry we we can't it's like ah crap so 
we'll see. You know, right now everything like you know the whole world's on pause. So, but before that, yeah. everything was wonderful. You know, I I couldn't ask for I didn't I the thing is again I don't have an agent. I didn't have to solicit anybody. They just if they wanted to find what really changed though. Let me tell you this: the, what really changed was the documentary because once the documentary got out there, from a media standpoint. You didn't have to, let's say you ran a newspaper or a radio station or a television station. You didn't have to contact Flat Earthers directly to find out about it. All you had to do was watch the movie. So that's what everyone did. Yeah. They watched the movie first and they used that as the anchor. Then they could go to their producers or hire producers and say, oh, hey, it's already on Netflix. We can talk about this now. Beforehand, there was a lot of nervous people really nervous people to where um you know they would contact me and say i'm really i'm really nervous about doing this podcast or whatever it is uh because i'm afraid of the backlash and now that's not the case anymore now it's out there in so many different avenues it's like okay apparently we're we're, we're going to talk about it i saw when you um when you mentioned the virus you did it in quotation marks yeah we had a little bit of a chat about it before yeah before i would like i would love to know your opinion and your thoughts everyone's got different i think there's so many things no one's got an opinion it. like i have so <laughs> <laughs> my opinion is different <laughs> i have been i have never received you can remember this thing has not been going on that long um i have never received so many links in a two-month period from from different the, the theories that are circling around in fact um i did a cbs interview um last week and they were asking me, and I don't know if they'll print it or use it or not. They said, you know, because they were curious, because the conspiracy world now is taken really, really ramped up because everybody's home. So people are watching a lot more YouTube than they used to. And you know, there's a lot of stuff out there. And so the top five thing, here, here's the thing. It is absolutely, absolutely obvious to me, and no one will be able to dispute this, is that, I do I believe it's real? Yeah, sure. Why not? Do I think it's absolutely it's it's as real as as SARS or H one N one or swine flu or anything like that, right? It's, it's real. I'll, I'll just I'll just come out and say it. It's as real as that. I'm not going to do go down the denial thing, but is it being overblown and overhyped to levels we have never seen in the history of mankind? Yeah, yeah. They're treating this thing like it's the four horsemen. I, it, which is absolutely stunning. I mean, I'm a big stats guy, and the numbers are just exceedingly low in fact i don't even know i could look at the stats on our states right so supposedly eight thousand people have died in in the united states right well it's 350 million people here and it's been four months Eight thousand people we we lose more than that on bicycles <laughs> in four <Yeah>. months <laughs> we we lose more we lose more in just about anything you can think of eight thousand eight thousand extra people is nothing and we've shut down multi-trillion dollar economy. I mean, you you don't I don't I mean, well, you guys don't know, know what it's like over there. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, in fact, it's changing not on a weekly basis, it's changing on a daily basis to where now they implemented and it'll come out today where they're they have stopped in as far as grocery stores goes. They have limited people to five people now in, in well, it won't happen everywhere. But in the bigger grocery stores, five people per thousand square feet. So, which wow. means they're capping the amount of people that can go into stores. I mean, there was a hardware store that I tried to get into yesterday. They were literally capping, and they put a sign outside. We are limiting the amount of people that come into the store to 15. Not 50, 15 people. And it's like, whoa, whoa, what are you talking about? It's 15 people with like one register. It was just staggering. Okay, so... What, this thing is getting hyped up to no end and I'm, I'm going to go off on a huge rant on it on, on Tuesday and exactly why but there is the, the bigger thing here is everyone is waiting for the other shoe to drop the, the, the common denominator I'll throw it to you guys and you can have a UK exclusive on this one <clears throat> there's a common denominator here and it's not any of the other smaller things we'll get into the smaller mm -hmm. things in a second the common denominator is they want you home period there's there's no other the, everything that's been circling around the virus is for one reason and one reason only they want you home and if it was me because you know i've been accused of being a lot of things including you know government agent the only reason you would do that is to um help with infrastructure after an event meaning uh i'll give you a quick example 
uh, and we can run over time. Uh, I know you guys, you don't care. So um, <laughs> think of it, think of it this way. So we had a, uh, some, I think at least 10 years ago, uh, we had an earthquake in Washington, D.C. And during that earthquake, two things happened immediately. The first thing was every mother in the, the entire Washington, D.C. area got on the phones and tried to call the schools looking for their kids. Well, the phone lines locked up almost immediately. It's like just gridlock on the phones. And because they couldn't get through the schools, they immediately all got in their cars and drove on the freeway at high speeds, locking up the freeways. That happened in, in a span of about 30 minutes. <laughs> well, that's something you don't want to happen in some sort. The last thing you want it to happen in any sort of major event is you don't want people around because everyone's on this mission, right? It's like, I'm going to find my kid or die trying, right? You don't want to multiply that by millions of people. It just, it's just a secondary thing of chaos. So what you do is you, um, uh, you, you get them home. That, that's, that's it. I mean, you don't have to worry about where the kids are if the kids are home. You close down the schools, you close down the universities, you don't go to work. I mean, seriously, 90% of the population right now, at least in the United States, is home. You know exactly where they are. So the question is, what is the second, what is the event? That's what I'm calling it. Um, the event. There's a follow-up to this. Something's coming. And it's big. Whatever it is, they're, it's big enough that they're worried about what might happen if, if people aren't home. Um, and of course, as you know, the rumors have been just freaking rampant, but most of them are too small. I mean, like in the United States, it's like, oh, the drain, the swamp. One of the theories is drain the swamp, which is, you know, Trump is going to lead this massive coup against the Democratic Party. He's going to do these mass arrests with the military and wipe out his opposition and form a dictatorship. Unlikely. And plus, it's only in the United States. Uh, people, people forget that it's like, look, not only in the United States and England, it's in 150 countries. They, they shut mm -hmm. down, they shut down India. How, how does you, how do you even do that? It's 1.3 billion people. How do you shut down? They did it literally in a day. They just said, yeah, and it's mad. quarantine, the India shut down. Um, one of the things would be population control. They said, oh yeah, we're going to kill everybody. You know, we're going to reduce the population because there's too many people. It's like, well, there's way more, simpler ways of doing that. Just put people in bunkers and just start, you know, gassing the whole thing or, or blowing it up. But there's so many different ways. Uh, the 5G theory, which is, you know, they're, they're rolling out, you know, 5G and this is a big 5G push. And it's like, okay, first off, 5G isn't everywhere. I've seen that one. Yeah, it's like that's. I mean, yeah, but there's, but it's all integrated. It's all, it's all part of it. Um, is the military being moved around to different places? You know, are they going to grab your guns? And is it going to be martial law? There, there isn't enough military in the United States to do martial law. It's a big place over here. People don't understand unless you go west. Forget about New York and the Eastern Seaboard. You start going west into like Wyoming, Nebraska. There's not a lot out there. You know, even this town, the towns are very small. We, we only have, our combined military isn't even 2 million people. Like we got a lot wow. of tech, we got a lot of tech, we got a lot of great toys, but we, you know, it's not, yeah. it's not like the Chinese infantry of a hundred million. I mean, we got, we got a lot of stuff though. Um, so, so, and our, but our hospital tents being set up and, and all this other stuff. Sure. Sure. But for me, uh, I'll, I'll let you guys, me, I think it's much, much bigger. I think there's something coming that is, it can only be one of two things, in my opinion. It's either celestial in nature or seismic in nature or tectonic, seismic, tectonic, same, same sort of thing. Uh, think along the lines of um, Deep Impact from 1998. If you haven't watched that, watch that again. Or um, uh, 2012 with John Cusack from, from some years, 10 years ago. Watch that. Something, something's coming. I don't know. I, I'm still trying to work out the details, but that's what we're. That's... How how do you find out the details? How, like where where for you has this just come from, and how someone like yourself yeah. or others around how how do they find details? Because you can look online, but that's just going to be the, covered the, by what? I mean, you can news. you can hear whispers, but everything's so compartmentalized. This is one of the things where you don't have to tell. Like, you're not going to tell any of the National Guard troops. You're not going to tell the average military guy. The military people that that have been floating around whispering recently, they're all saying the same thing. It's like, oh yeah, we're getting we're getting set up for some. We activated like every reservist under the age of fifty, just recently. That's a whole another million people. Act you know, and that's something also you would do. It's like, get anyone that was in uniform, get them back in freaking uniform. Um, but as far as looking for the clues, I can't tell you the clues, only that I can tell you that how you know if you're getting close. 
to it. You know, like the window, I call it the small box theory, which is you make the boxes, you put people in the box, smaller and smaller in boxes, because ultimately you want them in the house. That's it. You would love for everyone to just be in the freaking house. It's damn near impossible because people are restless, like um, your friend here. He, he's climbing the walls already. He wants to get out of here. But but it's true. I mean, like we like we shut down all the businesses and museums and, and everything. So people, what they do? They went to beaches and parks. They literally just people in droves went to beaches and parks. It's like, well, we can't get in trouble there. They closed down the beaches and parks. They're doing everything. They're everything to do that. So you'll know if you're getting close. Um, one of three things could happen. Uh, one would be a complete mandatory quarantine, like a, like a hard, I'll call it a hard quarantine where they say, okay, we're going to do something really radical here to slow the, the spread of this. We're going to shut down everything, including the grocery stores and the pharmacies for a period of like a week, right? Mm -hmm. Start starting, starting whenever it's possible it can be done. I mean, South Africa, for example, um, in their thing, they said they were going to shut down the liquor stores. They did for 21 days, which, and what do wow. you think? But they said, okay, so yeah, starting tomorrow, we're going to shut down the liquor store. So what do you think happened? <laughs> Everyone went to the liquor stores and bought every single bottle of alcohol. Everything. Oh yeah. There's, there's no <laughs> alcohol in the stores. It's empty. Um, the other thing you could do is, um, which would be even simpler. It's a little spooky, but you could do it is do a blackout. Um, some sort of a, a series of rolling blackouts where either announced or unannounced where you just black out because at that point you've got social media down, the internet's down. And since everyone's home, that forces people home anyway, because literally at that point it's like, well, you can't go to the grocery store because the grocery store can't, and the registers don't work. If you can't use the bar can't scanner, you're done. It's not like the old days where you used to have price prices on everything. You use a calculator. Mm. We, we could have done that back in the day. Um, once you see those things, that's, that's pretty much a guarantee that whatever it is, is really, really close. And of course, the last thing would be, um, lack of press briefings, meaning, uh, if all of a sudden, I, I don't know if your minister is doing pre or whoever's doing briefings on a regular, but if like over here, you know, Trump and his team come out every day, if all of a sudden Trump and his team didn't come out for a day or they, they were broadcasting from a place that looked different. And, uh, and th by that, I mean, something was off about it. You know, the, the background was different. You know, they could try to simulate the, the White House press briefing room, but those would be the, the three things I would look for. But yeah, there's, there's something coming. I mean, every, everybody f on my side in the conspiracy world feels this. Uh, they, they just can't put their finger on it. And most people are thinking too small. You know, they, they think, oh, it's, it's martial law. It's the FEMA camps. It's like, you don't get it. 150 countries have shut down. This is way bigger than the United States. How do you shut, what, to, for what reason would you shut down the world? I mean, this is, we're in uncharted territory here. I, in fact, I, I kind of pinch myself because I never thought I'd actually live long enough to, to see the day. Because this, you know, everyone says, oh, you know, um, do you remember, do you ever watch The Simpsons? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So do you remember uh, uh, there was the, the episode was Stampy the Elephant? Love that episode. There was, a, there was a great part where Stampy's running at night. He runs through Flanders' yard, right? And Flanders gets up. He goes, it's the four elephants of the apocalypse, right? And, and his wife goes, that's horsemen, dear. He goes, well, getting closer, right? Because <laughs> secretly there's a lot of people, you know, in the Christian community as well. It's like, oh, come on, you know. It, it will revelation come and and by the way the christian community is basically just blasting trumpets over here getting getting ready because it's you know every, everyone's like it's like is this it is this it you know because yeah. we've heard so many cry wolf things and i i'm I, part of me hopes i'm wrong <laughs> it really does but another part of me it's like yeah you know what the plan's working good so far let's let's see where you're gonna go with this um uh, and let me end, let me end this part with this, which is, and I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to include this. I'm going to look for this, uh, today. I'll find it. Um, there was a trailer for, I don't know, it's before your guys' time. Uh, there was a trailer for 2012, the movie, which was done back in 2009. And the theatrical trailer was really creepy where it showed a, a, um, a giant wave swallowing up part of the Himalayan mountains. And it said, you know, what would the government tell you? if the world was going to end right and the punchline literally was they wouldn't 
And, and and there were people in the theater that were like upset about that. And I was going, what? They wouldn't. <laughs> They're not going to tell you. It's like they don't want people right around the streets. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, like if you hated your neighbor, it's like, you know what? I never liked you. Blam, blam, blam. <laughs> There's people who do dumb, dumb things. So anyway, so that's that's my take. Um, the the virus is just again, it's it's a stage. It's a precursor. It's it's a it's a mechanism for for something much bigger. I'm I'm gonna go the other way though. I'm gonna say that it's something really really cool. I'm hoping that it is a um, uh, uh, you know that it's part it's tied to flat Earth in some way, and that the skies are just gonna crack open. And, and we'll see. Uh, it'll be the beginning of a new golden age. How's that? And 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 the whoever built <laughs> and whoever built this place, all of a sudden they'll start flying around because all the protocols are off. And it's like, well, they know. <laughs> we'll just I'm gonna put that bit in the trailer. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. That's the trailer sorted. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> That's I. Yeah, I mean, but. It, the whole virus, I mean, for myself, we've been in lockdown for, I think it's just over a week now where they... Is it only a week stores. for you guys? I thought it's it was only, like two. It's, it's been two weeks. It's been two weeks. It's been two weeks. It's two weeks, it's two weeks I'm not now. So... I've been asleep. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks now, but obviously we still have the grocery stores. And like you said, America, you've got the only certain people at a time. You were only allowed, in our grocery stores, we are allowed one in, one out one in one out that's it you're only allowed to go in we're queuing outside of our stores only one person is allowed in one person when one person comes oh yeah yeah yeah. So well it, yeah that's what they do when they when they hit their capacity yeah yeah that's and we just started that and by the way that's also the reason uk you guys seem to know things you guys before we do i don't know what it is but uk seems to always have the first they if, your intelligence network is better than ours I don't know. See, it's funny. It's so funny that you you say something like that because us, us as Brits, would say we don't know anything. We don't. We don't know anything. For us, there's seventy percent of us here in the UK are arguing the fact that we have reacted way too late to everything. We're we're just lucky because of the deaths or the toll and everything that's being recorded. Oh yeah. So we're we're always the ones that are saying we don't know anything. We're last to find out. Americans and the American government, they know more than us. We, we need to find out things from them. We know a so lot it's really of really funny uh, that you sit there and say that. Yeah, and that's that's also by the way, that's another line from James Bond where it's like, you know, here we are looking over our shoulder, thinks M I six have us, you know, and you don't even know we exist. Um no no, I, I firm <laughs> I firmly believe because you remember the the British intelligence network is older. Way older than us. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. the United States gets to do a lot of cool stuff. We got a lot of cool gadgets, and we tend to take more risks. But I think the UK uh, government, for whatever reason, may maybe it's because of the royal stuff, maybe it's because of the Rothschilds, who knows? Probably because of the Rothschilds. But they they get tipped off faster. They, uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, and, and here, I'll give you a quick example, not, not to draw this out. But there was... Um, in the beginning of this, and I noticed this, I, you know, I, I absorb a lot of media. And the, before anyone started locking down anything, do you know what I noticed? There's something that really caught my eye. And that was the new James Bond movie was delayed instantly. Before, and it was like the first mm -hmm. movie, not only was it the first movie to be delayed, it was the, fir it was the first delay of any kind of anything anywhere. It was, it was like all of a sudden, whoever was running that studio, so I think somebody at the high end of that studio is going, they got a whisper from someone. It's like, oh, hell, we're not doing this movie. And they just po postponed it immediately. And nobody even nobody even batted an eye at it. But that it, it was like mm -hmm. the first thing. I was going, why are you guys so early on this? And uh, yeah, they've, they've postponed it now to what? Is it, is it November now? October, November no. time? Oh, yeah. That November 2021, I think. It's like it's next year, I believe. Oh, yeah. I'm probably really making that you, up. Yeah, it's like, yeah. You you guys don't, I mean, you guys don't realize, you know, because we create so much media over here, and almost all of it is shut down. No movies are being made. No movies are being released. Um, talk shows are canceled. Anything with a live audience is gone. Um, mm. Morning shows, barely hanging on. The news, we're losing news anchors, real or not. <laughs> <laughs> where where the anchor's like oh i'm sick as soon as, yeah. as soon as they get tested they're gone 
You know, they're, they're not on, so you have replacements. Uh, even game shows. Game shows are not being produced because it's like, oh, you know, because most, it's mostly lawyers' rules. That's one of the reasons, by the way, this, this, the virus thing works so well in terms of effectiveness. And that is lawyers come in and they say, well, we could be legally vulnerable if, uh, if somebody catches it and says that they were in, you know, they caught it in our audience. They could sue us. And that's all you have to do. I mean, lawyer's rules apply. And yeah. that's it. No one's going to argue with the lawyers. It's like, yeah, fine. I mean, but, but sorry, that was another thing. One of the, one of the first groups to, to cancel over here was the NBA, the National Basketball Association. They didn't even, they didn't even, really? Oh, yeah. They, they were like the first out of the gate. It's like, yeah, we're canceled. I mean, they, they hinted right off. It's like, oh, yeah, we're thinking of playing games without the fans. And the players are like, why the hell would you do that? That, that doesn't even make sense. And, yeah, point. Yeah. and then all of a sudden they said, oh, we're just going to pull it. It's like, really? It's a multi-billion dollar industry. You guys didn't even fight. And so, hey, sorry, there's there's too many little facets of this that scream yeah. that there's something else. Uh, let me throw out one more thing. I don't think, I don't know if they're doing it in your neck of the woods. But over here, once everyone got home, they were extreme, way so generous as far as what they were giving people at home. To, to make sure they didn't worry once they got home. Meaning it's mm -hmm. like, it's like, oh yeah, mortgage payments. Yeah, you don't have to worry about those for three months. Oh, taxes, oh, nine, another three months. You don't have to worry about taxes. Uh, no one gets to evict anybody. Uh, we're going to mail you checks. <laughs> and just went, it's like student loans. Yeah, don't worry about those. I mean, literally, if you could think about it financially, they just waved it off and said, I've never seen so many groups and nobody even debated it. Nobody even really you, you you got all the universities the government just stepped in and said no university is going to charge anybody student loans for three months really it, it everything in that just it it made people again your people are still getting you know going crazy and l let me sorry let me end this rant with this which is uh do you have something over there called house arrest do, yes i think we do yes okay so yeah house arrest over here you know you put a, a thing on somebody's ankle and um hmm. And they have to stay home, right? Well, the only difference between actual house arrest and what's happening to us now is we can drink. That's it. That's the only difference. Because <laughs> in house arrest, you can't drink over here. You, you, because if you do, because it's supposed to be a punishment. That's the whole point. Staying home yeah. is considered a punishment here. <laughs> and, you know, it's which is why alcohol sales have gone up, um, I think, like 50, 60%. <laughs> Because people just load up on booze, like fine, I'll stay home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that's just England throughout the whole year loading up on booze. Yeah, that's just, yeah. yeah. That's weird. Just England. Yeah. We're 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 a country that likes to drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, all of this is fascinating. As you mentioned, we could people could talk about this for hours and hours and hours, giving their opinions. Yeah. Uh, I think how are we doing for time? I think we're coming up to just an hour now. So I think. I think we'll stop it there. Okay. I mean, again, yeah. thanks, mate, for coming on. Oh, yeah. Really appreciate you coming on. Obviously, yeah, people that are you. watching or listening, if you haven't checked this guy out, he's got uh, a book, a film documentary. He's all over the internet, uh, YouTube, YouTube channel, channel well. uh, yeah. everything online. Check him out. Uh, I'll link some of your stuff down below if you could send me some of them. I'll link a lot of stuff in the description of everywhere. Uh, again, Harvey, thanks for joining today as well. Um, Stay safe, Mark. Hopefully, who knows? You may be right. You may be I, right. I hope not, but but yeah, you stay safe too. And um, yeah, <laughs> well, we'll see. Let's we'll see what uh, next week brings. I'm and I'm very curious. By the way, uh, let me end uh, with I'm very curious with the Queen's speech uh, in, tomorrow. Yes. Clearly, there we go. You've heard I it. Have no idea that was a Queen's speech. All of this is good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know Brilliant. she hasn't she hasn't been on in like 20 years. So yeah, uh, people I'm sure are going to pay attention. <laughs> we'll find out. Right. Okay. Okay. Cheers, Mark. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, that, you know. Mate. Thank it's you guys. Like, it's really good much. episode. Really good. Yeah. If you if you guys need any, uh, yeah. anything else or any resources, uh, let me know. Yeah. Thank you um, very much. You've got you've got my email address. Yeah. So send me over some links and things like that, um, and I'll put everything all in there for you as well. Okay. Thanks, guys. Cheers, buddy. All right. Thank, thank you very much. See ya. Bye. Bye.